Welcome to SMC Starlight Lounge here at uh, Starlight Radio. I'm your host, Ty the Voice Guy. And in the lounge and straight from Brighton, England, SMC's September 2015 Artist of the Month, I am Warface. Today we're talking with Matt and Louie. Gentlemen, so honored to have you with us today. How's life treating you today? Very well, sir. And you? (laughs) It's it's Very been fun. Uh, the little the little pre-show was awesome. It's always nice to be backstage with you guys. And wow, what a backstage show you put on! <laughs> <laughs> and you know, since uh, since today is May the fourth, uh, we found it only fitting to have you guys here, since you are major Star Wars fans and uh, uh, Starlight people. It would have been cool uh, if I had the video, but these gentlemen have a serious collection of Star Wars memorabilia, so much that I uh, I cried a little bit, and and I'm just <laughs> so impressed. And they, first off, tomorrow, every day. <laughs> <laughs> first off, guys, tell everyone. Let's just get this right to it. Tell everyone about I Am Warface. Uh, tell us the the inception. Uh, tell us everything, and we want everybody to know everything about you. So I'll just let you have the floor. Take it away, guys. Uh, well, Iron Warface was um, formed about uh, a year ago. It was actually one of my solo projects. Hi, I'm Matt, by the way. If anyone yes, listening, you are. Um, it was a solo project I formed about a year ago. Um, just basically being fed up with playing with band members that didn't quite get the you know the vision. So, um, yeah, started recording a lot of stuff uh, and then eventually, um, maybe, I don't know how long after, I met Louis. Um, so, uh, October. Oh, yeah, October last year. Met Louis um, on Facebook. He was already on my Facebook page anyway, but I didn't really know very well. And um, he sent me a message completely out of the blue asking me if I'd like to go up with him to London for Force Friday, which is when all the new uh, Star Wars toys come out. So I was kind of um, a little bit apprehensive because I didn't really know Louis and I was a bit kind of like, well, I don't really know this strange man who's inviting me up London to go and get, buy Star Wars toys, you know. <laughs> and, um, anything could have happened. Anything, any, yeah. <laughs> so um, ev- eventually, um, eventually I got talked into, you know, I, I kind of thought about it and I thought, hang on a minute, why wouldn't I want to go up to London and buy Star Wars toys? I mean, why wouldn't I want to do that? You know, it's it's great. So I eventually talked myself into doing it. And um, so I said to Louis, you know, right, let's do it. You know, why not? Went up to London to buy Star Wars toys. Uh, ended up talking about music. Um, I mentioned to Louis that I was trying to, you know, form a band because obviously I recorded a load of tracks. Um, uh, at some point, going to need to have to take it out on the road. So Louis was basically saying, you know, he's looking for something else. Um, I played him the music in the car on the way home and he's absolutely falling in love with it. And that's kind of how we started. You know, we formed a band really around that. Yeah, I think Matt sent me the, um, Matt emailed me the tunes that evening and um, I um, I listened to them once and I'd learned all of them within about four hours because I was so like, I was so blown away by it. I picked up my guitar and played till about three o'clock in the morning and <laughs> learned a whole lot. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love hearing that kind of stuff, man. That's uh, that's dedication, and that's definitely two guys clicking. And you know, that's the start of, of good good stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah. uh, all where Star did Wars. We, oh. yeah, all from Star Wars. So, oh, yeah. so <laughs> SMC listeners, Star Wars is king. Let's just leave it at that, right there. Yeah. It, it can lead, <laughs> it can lead to marriages, to awesome bands, so many things. Uh, Even to <laughs> that that's right so tell tell us a little bit more what happened after that uh how did you get your other members and uh tell us about your other members also do, do you want to um, speaking yeah sure well no. I, we uh we came across uh our synth player who's also called matt funnily enough um who i've been friends with since i was in school um and we were you know as we were kind of starting to practice with just the two of us we we realized we kind of had to expand because everything's done with a lot of digitally programmed tracks and things on stage so um i i spoke about a friend of mine matthew whitehead who's an absolutely incredibly talented electronic musician and quite prolific in in england um and so we thought well you know ask him if he wants to get on board and he jumped straight on so um we you know we had a synth guy and um you know the only thing that we had left to complete was was a drummer which we found i think about two or three months ago now um and yeah yeah I, I was putting out some adverts in you know local uh local press and websites and uh guy alex basically got in touch 
And um, yeah, invited him over to meet us in Brighton. Um, really liked him straight away. And yeah, he's a he's a absolutely sound sound man. One of the one yeah. of the greatest drummers I've heard in a very very long time as well. He's a he's a fantastically talented guy as well. So yeah, it's very it, cool. um, it really yeah. completes the unit. Well, right on. Um, another question, real quick. You know, well, I think uh, most uh, people that interview bands and artists uh, influences. Matt, we'll go with you first. Who is your Who is your major influence that got you into music? And that can even include, believe it or not, you know, uh, uh, movies, stuff like that. Because I, I have talked to some people that go, "Well, I kind of had heard this soundtrack, and the soundtrack kind of led me into 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 wanting to do something much more." So, just let us know what kind of got you into it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, what it was was basically um, I'll tell you what started it. I mean, uh, I've always been a uh, I've been more of a fan of um, Jim Morrison than, than The Doors, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think that was actually after seeing um, that was after seeing uh, the movie with with Val Kilmer. Yeah. Um, just thought he was just the coolest you know, coolest, coolest thing ever, you know. Um, and then I think the time I realised that what I wanted, because I used to be a drummer, I used to be a drummer for about four years. Um, and when I went to see Stone Temple Pilots and saw the way Scott Whalen was mo- moving around the stage, he was kind of like a sort of skinhead Frank Sinatra going mad on the stage. And um, it was absolutely incredible gig, completely blew me away. Um and I think it was at that point I realised that's what I want to do. I want to be up on stage, you know. And and, and I'd always had, you know, I'd already um, always had a love of a lot of rock music, you know, um, a lot of kind of eighties kind of rock music and all that kind of stuff. And it, yeah, it just struck a chord. So you know, that was the point I realised that's what I want to do. I want to be a you know singer in a band. Um, and over you know over the last sort of few years, gradually honed my my sort of songwriting skills and you know and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that was it really. So a bit long winded story. No, 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 not at all. Where did you, uh, where did you see Stone Temple Pilots at? Brixton Academy. And where is uh, that located? In right in so, the heart of Brixton. In Brixton. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was in London, Brixton, London. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. It was, um, it was quite trippy as well. Cause they had like lava lamps at the, at the bottom of the stage with, uh, uh, spotlight shining up through onto this big curtain and uh, um, curtain as a backdrop and it looked like they were playing in front of a huge wall of fire so it was just amazing it was you know one of the best gigs i've ever been to and that was the, that was the thing that kick-started me i just thought i've got to be involved in that you know fantastic I'm i'm always a big fan of 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 lighting in a show lighting effects i mean that can make such an awesome show uh, when you have great lighting effects, and I had never heard of the idea of uh, running uh, running spots up through uh, through lava lamps. But uh, I'll have to do that in my house sometime. <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey, I got rid of everything, and uh, I got us a couple of lava lamps and uh, and some spotlights, and this is how we're running the house now. So you're just gonna have to enjoy it, especially if you take some psychedelics. As well, then you'll be all right. I don't doubt that at all, Matt. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Louie, tell us about uh, what got you started, uh, why you're in music, and, and, and what gives you the groove and the move to uh, to do what you do, man. Well, for me, it really started with my dad. Who um, My dad was a, he used to be a studio sound engineer and um, stuff like that in, in the 70s for, you know, for a lot of quite big bands. Um, and also my mum was a, uh, like a sort of reasonably prolific jazz musician at the time. Um, and so when I was a kid, I just grew up around that whole lifestyle. And a lot of my friends and a lot of my, you know, sort of extended family have also all been in that kind of business for, for a long time. So it's something that was always, I think, going to happen. But for me, when, it, you know, musically what started, it was things like Led Zeppelin um, and then later on stuff like the Smashing Pumpkins and the Pixies, like all, all the things that I found really emotive and they're, they're the things that really kind of inspired me to to write and play play the guitar and write songs. Um, and I think it was this sort of mutual joint love of, of very similar music and styles of music um, that really kind of made me bond with Matt at first. We realised that, you know, we shared a very common ground um, and I think... Uh, with me it's like as life goes on you know you never stop drawing inspiration you know that you never stop finding new things that you love and um so it kind of led on to that and you know it's that that 
that really is kind of uh, maybe the most inspired I think I've ever been by um by by new music is you know and something I'm I'm really privileged to to be involved with now. So you know it's um it's it's kind of gone from childhood to now. Like my you know my whole life has led to this point. If you get what I'm saying, <laughs> I absolutely do, man. Because uh, for me, and and I don't like to talk about myself much. Uh, <laughs> um, ah. I'm a uh, I started with Looney Tunes. I, I mean, being a voice actor, that's, you know, the number one thing that I love to do is is being a voice actor. It all started when I was six or seven years old with Looney Tunes and cartoons back in the day. And I could learn that I could impersonate those and make my friends laugh. Big fan of SCTV and, and Saturday Night Live, the, the old original back in the 70s. Did I just show my age there? Yes, I did, but that's okay. And, and, and it is. I older than 24, so you're doing all right. <laughs> I'm an old fart. We'll just go with that. That's that's the age, that's the age I'll go with. Yeah, the teenagers run away from me. Let's just put it like that. So, <laughs> so They always did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> run! Run, children! Run! Here come the rock stars! Ah! I don't want to put your music in, in, in a genre, in a box or anything, but you guys have such this techno metal is how I kind of look at it. I mean, you have such an underlying sound of, of the synths and the, the effects that you can, can produce through a synthesizer and through a keyboard. But man, the bass, the drums, the, the vocals, man, they're all pounding and just got this hard sound. I can see the influences that you're talking about. When I was a DJ, I used to play, I, I liked playing Prodigy. You know, yeah. even the kind of clubs I played at, they weren't techno. They were kind of a mix of everything, but I loved playing Prodigy. I loved playing kind of that metal edge, that techno edge. You know, were you guys into that at all? I mean, have any influence on your sound for what you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was into the rave scene for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I was, I was also into, yeah, going... Um, Doing the whole clubbing thing and going, yeah. My was, my, I think mine was more kind of the trance kind of stuff. Yeah, but um, I can't remember most of it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. I, I remember, I remember it was good because I can't remember it. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, as far as far as yeah, I mean, I mean, I love the prodigy, absolutely love the prodigy. But I've got, I mean, I I, I literally have so many. I, I love all all so many kinds of music. Um, I mean, one of my big, big, big genre loves is um, classical film soundtracks. You know that kind of stuff, um, Wagner, all that kind of thing. John Williams. Um, yeah, John. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got a huge love of um uh the likes of John Carpenter, you know, who used to do all his own soundtracks, you know, that kind of real kind of eighties synth moody kind of soundtrack stuff. Actually um, on the way back from our rehearsal the other day, I listened to the whole of the Big Trouble in Little Soundtrack um Big Trouble in Little China soundtrack on the way home, um in on the motorway in it. Yeah, I drove a lot faster yeah. than I should have done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just got I just got done watching that movie not too long ago and I and I absolutely love that movie. And uh, the way that Kurt Russell comes across in that movie is just so cocky and so American truck driver type, you know, it was awesome. And speaking of John Williams or John, uh, uh, John Carpenter, the soundtrack for uh, not only The Thing, but for, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name, uh, The Fog. Yeah, yeah, the Fog, yeah, man. yeah. The, and Adrian Barbeau, too. I mean, but, you know, <laughs> I was a big fan of Adrian Barbeau back in my day. And if you people out there don't know who Adrian Barbeau is, Google it and look at her and you'll see why. I was a fan of her back when I was younger. Say My Name video, our keyboard player playing a Prophet 5, which is the same synth John Carpenter wrote a lot of his soundtracks. Really? If, yeah, just just if you yeah, next time you watch the video, have a little look. The big brown one, that's exactly the same one he used. I think he wrote the soundtrack to... Um, I think it was Halloween on that, and I think he did another couple of films, but he was that specific company. He loved using them, and um, yeah, our, 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 uh, our keyboard player is a bit of a he's a bit of a geek when it comes to tech like that. He, he bought it because he loves them so much. So I remember when the when Moog came out, Moog synthesizers came out and, and, and actually came into the spotlight, and that was so awesome. I mean, I really kind of fell in love with the effects and with the, the music you could get out of a synthesizer just blew me away. And speaking of, of Fear of the Future, uh, it is, on, it is mm. on, in, on YouTube right now. You guys can go check out uh, I Am Warface on YouTube. You guys are also selling your singles for purchase on iTunes. But I want to talk about Fear of the Future, the video. 
uh, I suggest every listener out there in uh, SMC land to watch this video if you haven't. Not only did it give me the creeps, it made me excited. It was something different. <laughs> Who was playing the the uh, makeup guy? Who was that? Right. Well, that was um, that was actually my brother in law. Um, <clears throat> it was a very very close call because we we were. I was um, discussing the concept of the video with Johan, the director, for quite a long time before we actually managed to get around to shooting it. And the original, I think, originally um, I was going to be that character um and i had a makeup artist um my niece actually she was going to come in and do the makeup on me and for some reason i'm not quite sure what happened but she wasn't able to make it right at the last minute so i kind of thought to myself right i've got i've already already got a lot to do because me and johan we kind of co-directed it and sort of we, we sort of wung it as we were going you know wung wung or wing, <laughs> wing. <laughs> I've just invented a new word. We'll go with go with wang it. That sounds we'll awesome. Wang it. All right. That sounds great. Um, so, <clears throat> so anyway, um to be perfectly honest, the thought of making myself up and then shooting it and everything else, I just thought I really can't be bothered. So um uh, literally the day before I was I, I mean, I, I couldn't think of anyone else thinking, I need someone who's going to be able to do it and who's going to be up for it. And I just thought my brother-in-law. So um rang him up. He was like, yep, yeah, absolutely. He came down. I did the makeup on him, painted him all up. And he absolutely nailed it. He absolutely nailed it. It was brilliant. And it was a two-day shoot. And uh, yeah, it was it was absolutely you know he got he got completely in character. Um, there is a video floating around somewhere of uh, us ordering a pizza that afternoon, and the poor pizza, <laughs> poor pizza guy came to the door. And uh, Dean is 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 my brother-in-law's name. He uh, he went and answered the door in full makeup. He's a big guy as well. And he's a, yeah, Dean's he's tall. A he's guy. a tall guy, and this poor little pizza man. <laughs> Did not know where to look and was kind of like, what the hell's going on in that house? Um, so, yeah, it, it was quite funny. <clears throat> yeah, it was very amusing. But, um, I, yeah. I would love to steal that makeup if I can at some time. I would love to steal that makeup. Yeah. But I saw that makeup and I'm like, that is just eerie. And yeah. Yeah. It, it clicked something in my psyche that was like, yeah, I like this. This is this is awesome. Yeah, so, Go ahead. I'm just looking to make sure i think it is it should be on youtube um just making sure it is um if not it's also yeah. on the on the smc the uh starlight music chronicle site they can also find it there oh it, it's actually i've actually got it on youtube uh the setting is basically um it's not public at the moment i think because oh. i need to re uh, there's something uh there's something in the music i need to sort something out with it i'm i'm kind of going to rejig it a little bit so the video is going to stay exactly the same but i think the music is going to be a little bit rejigged so um but yeah um yeah if you go to the starlight music chronicle site you can see it on there i'm pretty sure it still works right on uh, but i i'm going to make it public right now so um you'll be able to see it <laughs> <laughs> because i can yeah. Well, you guys, we were talking earlier, and I promised the gentleman here, um, Louis and Matt, informed me that uh, Christopher Walken at one time auditioned for uh, Han Solo. So I'll, I'll leave the swearing out, but I will do my impersonation of Christopher Walken as Han Solo. So listen, you know, you know, Jabba, I know I owe you the money, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're not getting the cash. I'm not going to give it to you. And yes, I wasted poor Guido, and please do me a favor. Remember, I shot first in plain and simple because, you know, I'm Han Solo, and I'm a scoundrel like that, okay? There you go. <laughs> Kurt Russell also auditioned for the role of Han Solo. You know, I actually saw that footage. I, you know, I'll, I'll spend some time, and, you know, sometimes I'll be on Facebook or I'll just be coasting, you know, uh, surfing, and I'll say... Oh, look at this. Look at this. I haven't seen this footage, you know, so I pull that up and I'm like, oh, oh, look at this. And they'll show like the black and white of, of people auditioning for the roles. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, yeah. it, Sissy you know, Spacek was also up for the role of Princess Leia as well. That would have been crazy. It would have been a bit weird because yeah. she would have had to have used her force powers to kill everyone in the high school. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, who knows? Maybe she (laughs) had the force in Carrie. Who knows? Well, that was the point I was going to come to next. Yeah, yeah. Also, do you know E.T. is a Jedi? Ah, you know what? I was just going to say that. Yes, I do know he was a Jedi. He is. They are Jedi's because in the Imperial Senate scene, they're floating, and noticed them right off the bat. Yeah, and they're Jedi's. They can levitate. Yeah, they are. Um, mm, E.T. blow you up, you know. So. <laughs> e. T. Oh, no. I used to be able to do that when I was a kid, but I'm not. Yeah, you got to rehearse yeah, tonight. Know, You're going to damage your singing. <laughs> <laughs> I can still talk like Gollum now, my precious. <laughs> no, 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 no. The name's Smeagol. It's Smeagol. It's not Gollum. Yes, it's Smeagol. <laughs> Gollum. <laughs> Smeagol is a murderer. <laughs> All right, Louis, what's your impersonation you can do? Step up to the mic. You did a very good um, Sean Connery. <laughs> no, that's not Louis. Uh, no, that was a toy, actually. That wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> that is the coolest sound effect I've ever heard, man. That was awesome. And your, your voice can do that? Awesome. <laughs> I can do it. Sean Connery quite well. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Yeah, Let's. Well, it wasn't the first time you felt that sensation, McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> your head comes away from your body. It's Iowa, Highlander. <laughs> I've, uh... Under certain circumstances, a modicum of snuff can be quite efficacious. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets uh, fun. In the, this is where it gets uh, fun in the interview. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is my impression of Arnie. Jenny, it is not very good. You have to get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. You remember Sully? How I told you I killed you last. Yes, Major. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we got another Schwarzenegger walking around that looks just like him, his son. Uh, who? Arnold Schwarzenegger. I haven't seen that. Have you seen Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, uh, illegitimate son? No. Okay, well, there's something you can look up on Google. He actually dressed up like uh, like Conan for uh, Halloween. I think it was a couple years ago. Right. Wow. Yes, I love okay. blowing people's That's minds good. with info. No. I'm a massive, massive Arnie fan. I mean, Predator is uh, is one, and Terminator, one of my favorite films. Absolutely love them. We, uh, we owned the VHS of Terminator way back in the 80s and played that thing until it wouldn't play anymore. That was such an awesome <laughs> movie. Love that movie. What do you got going on tonight? You guys are going to rehearse? You got shows coming up? Yeah. Yeah, doing a rehearsal tonight. We've got um, the EP launch um, night in Brighton um, on Saturday night. Awesome. So uh, I'm being a very good boy. I'm not smoking. I'm drinking lots of water, warming my voice up. So uh, yeah, we've got to do. We're doing the rehearsal tonight. Um, do the gig on Saturday, and then after the show, I'm probably gonna drink some alcohol, <laughs> and um, and then I'm taking next week off. I'm probably gonna go on a little bit of holiday, and then um, get back on it. Basically, um, keep rehearsing. We've got a few other shows. We've got one in London possibly coming up. Um, in the middle of May. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do, I've got a very cool idea that uh, off the EP. Well, the EP is now launched. The launch party is Saturday, as I say, but we've already launched the EP. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is release. Uh, I think it's going to be red queen going to release that as a single. And I've got a very, very cool idea for the video. So I'm talking to a friend of mine who's a film director, uh, a guy called John Langridge. Um, He's uh he's sort of working with me on a few ideas, so we'll try and get that sorted out for maybe July time, and then hopefully, you know, um, if we can get everything sorted and everything else, release the album in August, um, and then go on a world tour, maybe. Well, uh, I don't know if you guys know it. I'm uh, I'm in Seattle. That's where I'm located at. And uh, if you guys make it out here, I would absolutely love to come see you. And if you uh, ever do a video here and uh, in the states, uh, I always play a bad guy. Always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we definitely get you in a video. I'm sure. I just kind of have that look where I could just like massacre people and go have pancakes afterwards. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, I, you look like a very nice man. My family thinks so, you know, and, and, and that's what's most important, and uh, everybody else can just uh, bite me. So Just, just don't invite me to, uh, to a, you know, a, a, a kind of house all on its own in the middle of Texas, because I might not come. <laughs> hey, hey, gentlemen, 
I got this house out in Texas, and uh, it's kind of <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere, and I was wondering if your band would like to come and play. <laughs> what do you think about that, Stevie? <laughs> yeah, let's get them out here. <laughs> so, you know, we'll have you out in Texas soon. Um, we got a cup. We got about about three minutes left. Um, let's talk about the Star Wars, and, and real quick, when was the first time you guys saw the original Star Wars, A New Hope? Don't remember. Oh. Um, oh, good. Uh, I, do you know, again, I can't remember. Um, it would have been in maybe in the late 80s, maybe, or something. Oh, I yeah. think I saw it, I saw it probably from when I was about two. I have absolutely no memory of watching any of them for the first time because I, I just, my whole life has been full with them. But I did calculate that I've yeah. definitely seen the trilogy over 500 times now. Yeah, um, wow. I think I think I must. It might must have been late eighties because I saw it when I was about four. I think so. It might have, yeah, I was eighty four. I was born, so it would have been probably eighty nine or something like that. <laughs> no, I, I, can't, I can't remember. I can't remember which one I because it was it was all. I, um, I think Return of the Jedi had had sort of just come out as well, so it all kind of blurs into one. So I can't remember which one I saw first, but. Um, yeah. Okay. I loved Last question before we, we got to cut this short, because it's not short. It's been a great half an hour. Favorite character from Star Wars of all time? Uh, we're going to go with you first, Louie. Uh, I think it'd have to be Boba Fett, really. Okay. Yeah, that's just, no, I, for me, it's always been that way. <laughs> Are you a dark side kind of guy, Louie? Uh, no, you know I'm on I'm on the fence. I just go with whoever's the coolest. <laughs> oh, I see how you play that. Okay, Matt, your favorite Star Wars character of all time? Oh, it's definitely got to be Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> End of. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, right. before we go, real quick, have you heard the theory about Jar Jar Binks? The, the what? Oh yes, the, he's, the, he he is the uh, he's the a Sith Lord. Lord. He is a uh, Sith Lord. No, I, I, I would I would say to that question, um, I would say it's got to be a toss out, and is it equal footing? It's got to be either Han Solo or Darth Maul. Right on, definitely. Because from... uh, Boba yeah. Fett's rubbish. You know, he get he, he he got. I mean, he looks cool, but he got beaten up by a blind man with a stick and fell into a hole, and that was it. You know, it's not particularly. <laughs> wasn't particularly very hard of it, was it? So, uh... <laughs> I, I, I think what I'm going to have to go with, I'm going to have to either say Han Solo or Yoda is uh, is 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 possibly my my two favorites. So uh, yeah, looks like Han Solo wins then because two of us, you know. That's right. We beat you out on that Boba Fett thing there, Louie. That's uh, all right. <laughs> all right, guys. Once again, it's been Matt and Louie from the band I Am Warface, and they were the 2015 September 2015 Artists of the Month on uh, Starlight Music Chronicles Artists of the Month. Gentlemen, it has been an absolute honor. Check them out on YouTube. Their singles are available for you on iTunes. You have one last word. Say it, and we got to go, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you for listening, anyone that's uh, taking the time out to listen. Um, you know, there's more stuff coming. Um, wait till you hear the album, guys. It's going to yeah. pretty much It's going to change away. everything. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to you, Ty. You've been an absolute fantastic host. And definitely, 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 when we meet in person, we need to go serious drinking. <laughs> yeah. I am thumbs up for that. Gentlemen, once again, I am Warface. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us here at the Starlight Lounge on Starlight Radio. Long days and pleasant nights, people. 